bless us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Well, I'm glad to be here today, and I thank you for those of you who came and prayed, and I know that many of you uh, were praying from where you were, and um, uh, I do ask that you just continue to pray for me. One of the last things I put in my notes this morning was a, um, a pastor that I had when I was a kid, and he used to say the same thing every Sunday. He said, pray for me. I need the prayer, and you need the practice. That was what he would say every, at the end of th- every service. So I get to start the service with, if you ever run out of things to pray for, pray for me. I need the prayer. You need the practice. And, uh, and so we're, we're looking forward to uh, what the Holy Spirit's going to continue today to do in our service. So I've asked, uh, I've asked Parker and, uh, and Jaden to help me out. So uh, come on up, Parker in here. Come on, Parker. So you guys know that I like, to, uh, I like to use examples. I pretend it's for the kids, but it's really for us adults. So because sometimes uh, I, I know uh, <laughs> Christian said last week, was it last week? Uh, or two weeks ago, whatever. No, it was two weeks ago. He goes, yeah, man, you started that thing. And I was thinking, where is he going with this? But I did, I did bring it back around. So this is a cup for you. This is a cup for you. Now, there, what, what's in the cup right now? It's not a trick question. I know it's just nothing. So I have, notice up here on the board, I have marbles in this bag. All right, how many marbles do I have there? There's only nine? Oh, no. Oh, here's the tenth one right here. I'm glad you said that. It's like, man, I, it's a magic bag. I put nine in it. And, okay. So how many are there now? Ten. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. And how many colors are there? Five. Try again. Four, okay, good. Yeah, this because they were separated. Kind of. Okay, so now the first thing we're going to do is I just want you guys to reach in and get even amount. I want you both to have an even amount of marbles in your cup. Okay, so how many marbles do you have in your cup? Five. How many marbles do you have in your cup? Five. What if I were to tell you that the marbles in your cup are not exactly even? What could be the difference? Color. The color. Okay, so put them back in my hands. Now, see, can we divide these up evenly by color? Mm-hmm. So what would happen? You would get, you'd get two white and you'd get two white. So go ahead and take those. And one of you would get a blue and one of you would get a blue. And one of you could have a red and the other could have a red. But now we have a problem, right? Because there's a red one and a yellow one. So one of you is not going to have a yellow, and one of you is going to have two reds. So go ahead and just pick. Okay, so now you still both have the same number. Are they even, you think? No, not yet? Okay. So here's, here, what if I told you that each color had a different value? So the white ones are worth something. The blue ones are worth something, the red ones are worth something, the yellow ones are worth something. So what if I were to tell you that the white ones were the least valuable ones and the yellow one was the most valuable one? Now who would win? You, because you have the yellow one. So, cool, all right, so pour those back in my hand. Thank you, and and appreciate it. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, give them a hand. Okay, so the... Here's what I was going to show you guys, and uh, well, I'll do this later. Don't want to lose my marbles. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. So, uh, so what I what I was showing them, Christian, you're wondering what the point is with this. No. So, the white marbles we had we had white marbles, and they were worth a half a point. Okay, not very valuable. Now, if you're just dividing up to have marbles and to shoot marbles, it was okay. But if you're looking at their value, it would be different. So then the blue was worth one. The red was worth two. Okay, can anybody guess how much the yellow was worth? Hmm? Five? Three? Four? What if I were to tell you that the total 
of the number that they equal at the end of the, at the, end of the game is 100. The yellow is worth 90. So you could just have the yellow marble all by itself, and if somebody else had all the other nine marbles, they weren't even in the same competition. Because whoever had the yellow marble, Jaden, whoever had the yellow marble, they won the game no matter what. When we talk about things that we have in common with other Christians, we, we tend to go, okay, well, there's, there's, this, there's 20 things that are going on in my life. I have 20 beliefs. Jesus is one of them. And then I have 19 other beliefs. I believe in predestination as opposed to this. I believe in, uh, I believe in pre-trib as opposed to post-trib. Okay, so, so we have these 20 different things that we agree on, that, that, we, that we believe, but I only agree with Lori on two of those things, Jesus and one other thing. So we would say, well, we're not very compatible because we have 20 things, but only two of them we, di- we agree on. There's 18 things we disagree about. But what if Jesus is the yellow marble and he's worth 90 and all those other things are only worth a half a point or a point? It gets to the point where you can go, you know what? I have way more in common with that other person than I do not in common with them because we have Jesus in common. So I was kind of going to show you this. <clears throat> so if you've got four white at a, at a half, that's two. Two blue is two. Three red is six. The yellow is 90. Two, four, ten. The most you have with the other one is ten. Okay, well now that was the end of the kids' message, and now we're going on to the adult portion of the game. All right? In the book of Romans. Paul is talking to us about having a balanced life, okay? And so I just, I just randomly came up with these four things. I think they're, they're fairly accurate. We have work, okay? We have play. We have family. And then we have God. But many people look at it as those are all equal quadrants of my life. Okay, I I have my work quadrant, I have my play quadrant, I have my family quadrant, I have God quadrant. Now, some of them may overlap a little bit, but basically I've got got these four quadrants and that's, everything's kind of equal and and even. Uh, Sally and I had a a friend one time and she said, you know what your problem is, is you let Mike, you and Mike let, uh, let God invade your entire life instead of just keeping him on Sunday morning for an hour. You know, you, you let him f- m- m- go over into every other area of your life. Okay, well, let's go a little bit farther. Let's say that, well, there are other things besides those four. Um, so retirement, I got a plan for retirement. I have to put away money. I have to be ready for retirement because that's going to happen. Then, well, there's my status. I don't, I don't want to be the last. I want to be the first because, you know, Ricky Bobby says... If you're, if you ain't first, you're last, whatever. And the first person to come, you know, second, second place is just the first person to lose and that kind of attitude. Okay. Well, then there's your possessions. Well, I have to have more than this person has. I have to have more than this person has. I, I want to have more than my parents had. I want to have more than my neighbor has. And then let's, it all boils down to, and then there's me time <clears throat> because I got to be me. I, I deserve to have me time. So there's all these different things. And, and so we begin to try to have this balanced life, but I have to tell you that God has a different view of a balanced life. God says, okay, there's, there's your, and then there's God. God says, no, no, let me be the, let me be the total focus of your life. And all those other things I'll take care of. I'll take care of time. I'll take care of uh, play. I'll take care of family. I'll take care of work. I'll take care of retirement. I'll, take, I'll even take care of me time because he loves us. He, he, he wants us to, to have uh, fulfillment and he wants us to have all these other things. And so my, my, my secondary thing to us as Christians is how much focus, how much, what percentage of our time and attention are we giving to the Lord? Well, I give, him, I give him that half hour, you know, I, I give him 10 minutes here. I give him, I give him five minutes here. I give him, I give him all of Sunday morning. I mean, I get up and I go to church. I give him all of Sunday morning. Isn't that enough? But it's not, a, it's not about that. It's, but is God my focus? Is, when I wake up in the morning, is it like, okay, Lord, what are we doing today? How are we, how are we gonna build your kingdom today? What do you want me to seek today? 
Paul has been talking to these, these Christians and anybody who reads the letter, which is us now, because uh, by next week we're going to be finished with this thing. But Paul's been saying to all of us, it's about a balanced life. It's about, it's about seeing what you have in common with other believers. It's realizing that God's had a plan all along and, and you're in that plan and, and how does that all work? And here's the, the, the big, the, one of the things he's going to talk about. Uh, Wednesday night, we started, uh, two weeks ago, we started in, on Wednesday night talking about spiritual gifts. And uh, there are different spiritual gifts. There's one fruit of the Spirit. It's one fruit, although it has many parts, but there's many gifts. And we're beginning to discover our gifts. And guess, one of the gifts is evangelism. Oh, great. It's a gift. I didn't get that gift. I don't have to do evangelism. Wrong. The gifts are for those people who are going to now equip everybody else with those types of abilities and those types of uh, things. But what we've made evangelism be, you have to go to the church. First of all, you have to get dressed up. You have to go to the church. Some of y'all are thinking, now I remember these days. You go to the church, you sit through a meeting, they, they make you memorize this, this little thing. Then you get a person, you get teamed up with this person that you don't like. You're going to be sent to Amityville Horror House on the third block over where you're sure as you step up on the, the squeak, squeak, you know, and it's a dark and stormy night and oh no, and, and I'm going to knock and some, this guy's, yeah, you know, and I'm going to try to evangelize the room and run that's what we've made evangelism become. But guess what evangelism is for, the Rome, for, for Paul saying to the Roman church? I used to be lost, and I'm not lost anymore. Can I tell you about Jesus? Or how did, how did Mike, you just got this horrible news, but yet it didn't devastate you. Why? Well, because I have a relationship with the living God. Well, you know, this happened or that happened. Or how, it doesn't mean there's, there's no stress. It doesn't mean there's no problems in our life. It doesn't mean the absence of, of those bad things. It means the presence of the Holy Spirit in spite of all those things. And that is what evangelism becomes. And, and if, we live, uh, if we live a life where God is number one and he's always our focus, then people will begin to go, oh, I know this guy, he's all, about, he's all about the Lord. Don't ask him a question unless you want a Bible answer, man. He's just gonna give you a Bible answer. And, and he's just, he, I mean, his whole focus is on the Lord. What a waste of time that is. And God's saying, oh, no, no, <laughs> it's not a waste of time. It's a good thing. So, so we're, we're, we're coming to the end of Paul's letter. And, um, and I just wanted to begin that way. Um, and I had a really cool revelation uh, yesterday was my birthday. That's the reason I'm wearing my happy pappy t-shirt uh, that uh, Julia and Sally got me. Um, but we were talking about um, evangelism. We were talking about sin at my house. There's no telling what the topic's ever going to be. Um, and so that you know, it's not always uh, ultra spiritual stuff. Uh, I guess I'll tell you about my birthday card. If you saw Sarah's um, post on Facebook about glad you didn't die before you blew out the candles, let me explain to you. And uh, this may be my last day as pastor. So um, Leah and Ben, and we just, we're normal people. We have a great sense of humor, I think. And Leah and Ben found this beautiful birthday card. And I, it was the first card I got. It wasn't even, and, and, and our, my house is like y'all's house. When, when anybody has a birthday, Jack and Lily and Oaks believe it is their responsibility to bring you the gifts sit as close as they can to you and open the gifts for you, if at all possible. Some of you are going, yes, yes, I know that. So, so I had, I had my, my three helpers right there and I get an envelope that has nothing written on the front of it. And I said, oh, who's this from? And, and Ben and Lee are like, no, we didn't have time to sign it. So it was just, it was the end of the day. I was sitting in the, the, the birthday seat and um, I opened the card up and I, as I slide the card out, it's this adorable black and white photo of about, I don't know, maybe eight month old, much younger than that. Okay. An eight week old, seven and a half week old. Okay. Thank you. So I, trust me, I wasn't going to put a, a, a video. Uh, I wasn't going to put a picture of it up, but anyways, it's this beautiful cherubim, beautiful little kid and just got this great smile. And as with many children, you know, his hands are just where his hands are. It just happens to be that it's the perfect picture of a seven-week-old flipping me off. And I just, I saw that and I began to laugh because I'm thinking, you know, of all the things 